Hey guys, this is Upesh from bwom.com and I'm here in beautiful Hawaii for the Snapdragon Summit 2019 with the Snapdragon 865 flagship chipset has been announced. Well, we went hands-on with the Snapdragon 865 phone, a reference device and well, there's a lot to talk about the new chipset. But before we get started, let me tell you that this video has been sponsored by Eralo, which solves a big, big problem, connectivity abroad. Eralo lets you purchase and manage eSIMs in over 160 countries easily. I'm in the US, so I tried it out and works really well. All you need is to install the app or go to the website, purchase an eSIM and select the plan you want. Now, once the eSIM is purchased, you just install it on your device via the QR code or manually, which is easy because everything's explained really nicely. And that's pretty much it. Your eSIM is active and you can even manage the eSIM here or disable it when you're done. Plus, Eralo offers the most competitive price plans out there. Yeah, this is a great app, so check it out from the link in the description. Anyway, coming back to the Snapdragon 865. This right here is the new Snapdragon 865 chipset. Now, this is the chip that will power most Android flagships next year. And this is the first phone with Snapdragon 865. I know this is a reference device, but hey, it packs in the 865 chipset. And honestly, this is pretty cool looking. But it's all about what's under the hood here. Well, time to talk about the flagship processor, the 865. What is new and what has changed from the 855? First up is obviously the new CPU and GPU. The Snapdragon 865 is again a 7 nanometer processor, but it comes with the new Cryo 585 CPU featuring the latest Cortex A77 cores. It's an octa core CPU with 4 high efficiency Cortex A55 cores clocked at 1.8 GHz, 3 high performance Cortex A77 cores clocked at 2.4 GHz, and a prime A77 core clocked at 2.84 GHz. Now, on paper, it does not seem a whole lot different from the 855, but the new Cryo 585 CPU with the new Cortex A77 cores is set to improve performance and power efficiency by 25%. There's also the improved GPU on board. The new Adreno 650 GPU also offers a 25% performance boost over the Adreno 640 on the 855, and it brings a whole lot of gaming features, which I will get back to. So yeah, the Snapdragon 865 brings the expected performance bump and while I can't show you the benchmarks from this test device, here's the leaked benchmark score of the 865. Well, you can obviously see that the 865 is beastly. I mean, here's the scores compared to the 855. Well, see the difference? Yeah, the 865 brings a nice performance bump. Here's the score compared to the new Dimensity 1000 and the 813 Bionic. Well, the Snapdragon 865 scores are better than the new MediaTek chipset, but yeah, there's no beating the 813 Bionic. Now, like I said, it brings a whole lot of gaming features. First up, there's support for QHD plus 144Hz displays now. Yeah, we don't even have a lot of 90Hz and 120Hz games, but hey, we should see 144Hz display phones next year. I'm looking at you, ROG Phone 3. Well, I played a 120Hz game on the Snapdragon 865 phone, which by the way also has a 120Hz display. And as you can see, it is smooth and nice. I also played PUBG Mobile because I know PUBG on 865 is what people are wanting to know about. Well, I only played the game briefly, but the performance was, yeah, flagship grade. Plus, PUBG Mobile will get HDR10 and 90fps support on 865 phones next year. So, yeah, that'll be exciting. Apart from that, there's new Game Color Plus version 2.0 and Game Smoother, Desktop Forward Rendering, HDR Fast Blend. To be honest, there are a lot more features on the gaming front, but there's one GPU-specific feature that I really like. It's the fact that with Snapdragon 865, Qualcomm will be working with makers to release Adreno graphics driver updates via the Play Store. Yeah, that is awesome. It's a big deal, really. Anyway, moving on from gaming with the Snapdragon 865 and 765, 5G is becoming the norm. The Snapdragon 865 brings the second-gen X55 5G modem, which is still not integrated, but it's part of the package. Phones with 865 will have to have 5G support. It's kind of mandatory. There's no choice. Now, what's great about this modem is the fact that it supports all the frequency bands, be it, be it millimeter waves, sub-6, TDD, MDD, SA, or, or NSA modes. Theoretically, the new X55 modem can achieve maximum download speeds of 7.5 Gbps on 5G. Yeah, that is insane. Even Wi-Fi 6 on the 865 can't match that number. Now, apart from that, the second gen X55 modem will work with 4G, 3G, and even 2G networks, so no problems there. Now, next up, the cameras. The Snapdragon 865 comes with the Spectra 480 ISP that has the gigapixel speed technology, which can capture at a speed of up to 2 gigapixels per second. 
Well, yeah, the new Spectra 480 ISP has some powerful features. First up, it supports 200 megapixel cameras and 8K at 30 FPS video recording. Yeah, that is insane. Not sure if it's very useful right now, but insane, definitely. I checked out some 8K footage from an 865 phone on an 8K monitor and it looked really good. The 480 ISP also lets you capture 64 megapixel shots while recording 4K videos simultaneously, which is also pretty impressive. Another great thing is the ability to capture 960fps slow-mo videos at 720p without any time limits. I mean, finally. Lastly, the Snapdragon 865 comes with support for Dolby Vision video capture, which is a big thing. It's a first and from the looks of it, it's super impressive. Take a look at this. The phone on the left is playing a video without Dolby Vision and the right is a video with Dolby Vision. Now see the difference in details, colors, basically everything. Yeah, I cannot wait to try it out. Apart from that, the Snapdragon 865 brings the new power-packed 5th gen AI engine which is 2 times powerful with the new Tensor Accelerator which should translate into some crazy AI performance. I mean, check out this live translation demo. The 865's AI engine is transcribing my voice into English and translating it into Chinese in real time locally. How cool is that? There's also improved audio capabilities and the new Qualcomm sensing hub which is particularly interesting. See, the sensing hub is set to offer more accurate voice detection and always on contextual features while using less power. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Lastly, there's this one Snapdragon 865 supported feature that isn't really a part of 865, but I wanted to try it out. The new 3D Sonic Max fingerprint scanner. But here is the new ultrasonic fingerprint scanner in action on a phone that's probably a 70 Pro. Anyway, unlike last year, this seems super fast. I mean, just look at this. Yeah, the speed may be due to the big footprint, but I'm not complaining. In fact, it's so big, you can punch in two fingers for even more security. Plus, you can use this fingerprint scanner to measure heart rate. Well, we should probably see the sensor on the Galaxy S11 and hopefully the OnePlus 8. So, so yeah, I'm excited to try it out. Overall, the Snapdragon 865 brings some powerful upgrades over the 855, be it on the gaming front, cameras, AI, and yes, connectivity. And that's pretty much all the things that matter. So yes, I'm impressed and I can't wait to try out phones with the Snapdragon 865. Hopefully, I'll be able to get my hands on the Mi 10, which should be the first phone with the Snapdragon 865. Well, it's obvious that the Snapdragon 865 is a power pack chipset, but a lot of its new features depend on how manufacturers plan to implement them. Well, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, what do you think of the Snapdragon 865? Tell us in the comment section below. Also, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and make sure to share it with your friends. Lastly, subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. So that's me signing off. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.